Okay, it's a little while since I did a tutorial on cocktail piano, and I know it's a it's a style that's really popular uh, with a lot of you guys. Um, you might remember that I, I I released a little book called um, an ebook called an introduction to cocktail piano earlier this year, and that's been really popular. So I'm I'm going to keep making some of this cocktail stuff. I'll talk a little bit more about the book um, at the end of this video. What I want to do today is. Um, build on some of the stuff I've talked about in the past on, on the subject of cocktail and some of the stuff you can find in, in the book if you have it and um, go through a chord progression, a very simple chord progression or well, it's not that simple but a chord progression that has simple chords in it and talk about how we might extend them to give it a more cocktail type sound. What I've done is taken um, a chord progression from a song um, and it's just the first eight bars of a kind of classic cocktail number called A Nightingale Sang in Berkeley Square. Uh, it was a really old song, kind of 1940s I think, uh, look it up, have a listen to it, it's a really lovely song. What we're just going to be looking at is, as I say, the first eight bars and to start off with I will play you the chords as they are written in the commercially available sheet music okay and I'll have them along the bottom of the uh, the screen as well so you can follow them as we go dead simple it's two chords to a bar four in the bar two chords to a bar and it goes like this E flat C minor G minor E flat 7 A flat G7 C minor a flat minor six, really lovely chord there. E flat, B flat seven, E flat seven, F minor seven, E flat, C minor, F minor, B flat seven, which sets us up again to go into the start of the next eight bar sequence, uh, which starts on E flat. So really lovely chord if you know the tune you, you can probably hear it you know hear it behind that that certain night the night we met there was magic abroad in the air i'll stop singing because it, it's probably really painful but if you know the song you'll um, you, you'll recognize it okay so how do we take those basic chords you know we, we we have them kind of listed as e flat c minor and that's almost always the case in commercial arrangements and the chords are quite simple so that you know so that guitarists can follow them uh, and, and all the rest of it how do we take those chords and enrich them to give us a really sort of um that kind of warm fuzzy mellow cocktail sound yeah what i'm going to do is go through those chords one by one and talk about how we can extend them and that's going to kind of seem kind of a bit mechanical and a bit sort of um theoretical but then what we'll do at the end is stick it together and and you know kind of um show what what kind of cocktail style improvisation we could come to okay so our very first chord is e flat major because we are in the key of e flat okay now as you'll know, if you know a little bit about cocktail, the basic way to um, enrich, to extend, to substitute chords in cocktail piano, as in a lot of jazz as well, is to extend them upwards. Okay? So the first natural thing to do to create that kind of rich cocktail sound is to turn that E flat into E flat major 7. Okay? You can probably hear immediately we're towards a, you know that much more mellow sound that is associated with cocktail okay if we wanted we could go further and we could play e flat major ninth okay which is even more kind of chilled out we've got to kind of think though about the next chord that we're going to which in its simplest form is c minor okay and again we can extend that if we want to we can extend it to c minor 7 C minor 9 or even C minor 11 which is getting really kind of wacky and, and extreme. Notice how those chords are following the same kind of ladder of notes upwards if you like. So E flat, E flat major 7, E flat major 9, C minor, C minor 7, C minor 9, C minor 11. It's the same note and we can exploit that as part of the progression. Yeah, maybe by doing something like this. Okay. 
So we've taken our basic E flat, C minor, and gone E flat, um, major seven, C minor, 11. Okay? Yeah? Just by going up, um, building thirds on top of the chords, okay? Um, if you're not sure about how ninth and seventh and eleventh uh, chords work, I've, I've got earlier videos on that kind of thing. But basically, we're, we're building thirds on the top of it, okay? So that's our um, basic E, um, e flat uh, chord, plus a third, major third in this instance, takes us to um, E flat major seven, plus another third, a minor third, takes us to E flat major nine, yeah? As I say, if you know a bit about chords, you will know that if instead of putting a major seventh on the top there, we put a minor seventh, then we get an E flat seven chord. If that's all seeming like rocket science to you, I'll include some links to some of my earlier, earlier videos, okay, where, where some of these basics are explained. Okay, so we've gone from our basic E flat C minor to E flat major seven C minor nine. Now our next chord is G minor, and look, that's really handy because we're already on in the right hand a G minor seven shape. Yeah. Okay, and that neatly resolves onto a kind of E flat seven extension as well. The next chord is E flat seven. And look how I've kept the F in there. So we've got E flat seventh with what I guess is an, an, an added um, an added ninth, yeah? Okay. So we've taken that very, that, that's just two bars we've covered there. We've taken that very simple sequence, E flat, C minor, G minor, E flat seven, and made something much more naturally cocktail-y out of it, yeah? Let's move on and look at what we've got next. Next chord is, um, we're moving on to bars three and four of our eights here. Our next chord is A flat. And again, the natural thing to do with that is to create an A flat major seven. Or if we wanted to, an A flat major nine. But I think the A flat major seven is a more kind of, um, a more kind of natural, more kind of idiomatic sound there. I think the A flat major nine um, would be going just a little bit too far in this context. So A flat major seven. Next chord is G seven, and a really natural inversion of that actually falls under our fingers from the A flat major seven, and it's to go here. Yeah. To rather than G seven, that's a G with an added ninth, which is the A. I could have uh, gone for G7 with an added ninth as well. So, A flat major seven to G7 with an added ninth or G with an added ninth. If we stick on that G, we're then very naturally set up for the next chord, which is a C minor, which I'm just gonna play as a C minor seven. And then next we've got that lovely, lovely, lovely A flat minor six chord, okay? And what I'm gonna do with that is this. Okay, so what I've done, rather than the straight A flat minor six, yeah, I've taken the basic A flat minor chord, added the six, but then stuck a ninth in as well. Okay, and rather than playing the tonic, I'm playing the ninth first, suspending it and bringing it down to the tonic. So from C minor seven to there, we get that lovely, lovely rich um, minor six suspended ninth sound. This is pretty geeky stuff, isn't it? I mean, I, I kind of, I kind of love it. Um, if this is all seeming like rocket science to you, as I say, go and check those early chord videos out. I know there are lots of you guys out there who, who love to get really, you know, you're a little bit more advanced. You love to get really down and dirty with the chords, as it were, and, and that's what I'm trying to do for you today. So let's look at those four bars we've worked through so far. Basically, E flat, C minor, G minor, E flat seven. A flat, G7, C minor, A minor 6, and look what we've turned them into, okay? E flat major 7, C minor 11, G minor 7, E flat 7 with an added ninth, 
Okay. Then jumping down. You know, I mean, you don't have to jump down. You can, you can play it here, but I'm jumping down. A flat major seven. G7 with an added ninth, climbing up a little bit. Okay. To C minor seven, and then that lovely A minor six with an added ninth suspended. Yeah. And that brings us to the start of bar number five, which is back to the tonic and E flat chord. Okay. So we could go to here. But a better thing to do might be to change the voicing of the chord. Look where we are, look, you know, you can play that or play that in the bass. Let's say we're playing that. We're really close to that B flat, yeah? How about rather than resolving to E flat with an E in the bass, we try resolving to that B flat, which is a natural step up or down in the left, which to go from the start of bar four would take us C minus seven, A flat minus six, where we are, lovely warm natural sounds coming through, and I'm not embellishing that E flat chord at all. I'm just playing it as an ordinary E flat. I, 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 you know, I could put, put a major seven in there. Next, we have the yeah, I, I love that tonic chord with a fifth in the bass sound. It's really, it's really warm and um, um, kind of, kind of, a, I don't know how to describe it, a grand sounding chord almost, especially when you come at it from something like this. You could even do that if you want to be really cheesy. Lovely. Then the next chord, B flat seven, already on the B flat in the bass. So I play something like this. Okay. We can do something like this, or we could play a straightforward B flat seven. Then to an E flat seven, F minor seven, maybe extending it up to the ninth. We're now at the end of the sixth bar, and here we are again. E flat making it a major 7, C minor 9, C minor 11, F minor uh, 9 I'm going for there, now at the start of the 8th bar, B flat, now on the very final chord of our 8 bar sequence, to resolve onto the E. But what I can do something really interesting with that B flat, which is use a tritone substitution. So my chord immediately before that, is the F minor 7, F minor 9, whatever I want to play. And then rather than going to the B flat, I can put in the tritone sub, which will be something like this. Oh yeah, that's, pre that's pretty cool, isn't it? Which resolves us really beautifully up to E flat to start the sequence again. Let me just, I've done a whole video on tritone substitutions, which I'll talk about before, but let me just show you how that tritone sub worked there. Um, we've gone from the F minor 9 and what I'm doing is playing, to get to the tritone sub, is going for the fifth note of the scale of the um, scale of the key in the left, in other words the B flat, but in the right I'm playing the, the dominant seventh chord that is a, a semitone, a half step up from the basic uh, tonic chord, which in this case half step up from um, E uh, flat 7 is E7 with a B flat in the bass resolves to an, an E flat and that's a tritone substitution and my brain feels like it's going to break after playing that and explaining it at the same time so if that all seemed like oh my word that was incredibly complicated do go through it slowly look what i've done with the chords yeah so from that very very simple progression okay i've put us in a position where by extending, by enriching, and by substituting some of those chords, we can do much more interesting, much more cocktail-y type stuff. Okay, 
Okay, so there we go. Uh, hopefully, um, you guys got something from that. As I say, if it was all kind of, oh my word, that was that was really complicated, do go back and look at some of my earlier videos about basic harmony, about chords, about jazz chords and stuff, and you'll, um, you know, hopefully you'll be able to pick some of that stuff up. The the interesting thing about cocktail is how it's kind of a mashup genre, if you like. There's an awful lot of jazz in cocktail. Um, and you know, especially in, in those extended and unsubstituted chords. Um, but the glorious thing about cocktail is that it allows you so much latitude and freedom. It's so chilled out. You don't usually. I mean, you can if you want to, but you, excuse me, you don't usually have the kind of um, very strict rhythm of a lot of jazz. Rather, you can be really free and rubato, rubato, to use the technical term. And cool. And if you make a mistake, it kind of doesn't really matter because you can kind of bury it under this sort of under a cloud of yeah. Um, there we go. Um, I said at the start I was going to talk a little bit about my uh, book. Let me just see if that's in focus. Um, if you watch the channel regularly, you'll know I've got an existing book in print, an, an earlier book in print, how to really play the piano. That's a good one for you if you're just start starting out with um, chords and stuff and you're not sure about how harmony and things work, you know, if, if you're really kind of a beginner in that sense, that's cool. But if you know a bit already and you are into cocktail, let me just check this is getting in focus, you might like my cocktail piano ebook, um, which is, at the moment, it's priced 9.95 UK pounds plus local sales tax, and it's got loads of really cool stuff in it, and everyone who's seen it so far seems to really like it an introduction to cocktail piano i'll just skim through it on my ancient first generation ipad here we go and what i basically do is take standard you know popular song progressions apart and explore how to make them cocktail look at the chords look at how we might enrich them how we might embellish melody all kinds of cool stuff in there plus um you know some explanations and links to um other resources on harmony and chords if you're you know struggling with that kind of thing you know how to put together a left hand loads of uh, different stuff how to use the pedal all, all in there for as i say just for 9.95 um uh, gbp as it were uk sterling which works out kind of about 14 dollars us i think at the minute plus sales tax if you um are um, in a jurisdiction which charges sales tax on ebooks, which unfortunately, if you live in the UK or EU, you are because um, ebooks are liable for that. I'm beginning to really waffle now. Listen, I'm talking about I'm talking about tax rates. That's pretty boring. I better shut up and get on. And um, yeah, I'm planning a couple more videos for Christmas. And I'm I'm actually, as I said, uh, I think in my last tutorial, I'm actually working on another um, kind of book at the minute, some studies for those of you who are interested in pop piano. So hopefully going to be some more news on that soon. Okay, there we go. Nice bit of cocktailing for you. I will see you again in a couple of weeks, I hope.